Hey, Void. How you doing? So, a few years ago back. Now, uh, working on my backlog, but I'm also trying to keep up with what I'm watching currently, just since those movies are fresh in my mind. So, that's kind of what this one was. <clears throat> so, Absentia. Now, this movie, I was originally going to be part of my 31 Days of Horror, but uh, it ended up getting just shuffled out of the mix to make room for young Frankenstein. But I still wanted to watch it, so I did. All right, so, Absentia. Now this was uh, one of Mike Flanagan's older works. This is actually his first horror film, though he wrote and directed three or four movies before then, and one horror short, the essentially demo reel for Oculus. But uh, Absentia was uh, a kickstarted back in 2011, or it, it came out in 2011, so I think it was kickstarted a little bit before then. And uh, yeah, now this one I actually didn't see initially and was actually originally going to give a pass on it. Because at first, back when I, I was only just learning who Mike Flanagan was at the time, I had seen Oculus at, uh, around that mo point and... I think that was, I think he was just really coming into the scene at the point because I had fallen in love with Oculus and one of my co-workers at the time mentioned Absentia was by the same guy. And it, which uh, then they pulled up an image of it, which was this cover, which this cover does not do this movie justice. And they said, ignore that. Yes, it looks like a direct-to-video horror, run of the mill horror, but it's actually really good. And well... Yeah, I agree. It actually is really good. Clearly very low budget, but that actually kind of works for this film. Alright. So, Absentia. Uh, this one follows a pair of sisters, uh, Callie and Trisha. Now, uh, Trisha is, uh, her husband is uh, being, has disappeared seven years ago. He just suddenly up and vanished. Just went to, uh, I think, went to work one day, never came back. Now, it is kind of hinted that she may have been fighting with him a little bit, so she was holding out hope that maybe he'd just show back up. Never did. No, no, no trace of him ever found. And he's finally, well, going to be dead. Now, she is heavily pregnant at this point, and uh, her sister, uh, his... Callie has just shown up. Uh, now Callie's kind of uh, been in and out of rehab, I guess, and she's just finally getting her life back together. Is now coming to help her sister in one of her more difficult times, particularly now getting the paperwork done to declare her husband dead. And well, as she's getting ready for that, she's starts seeing him everywhere, and he. The and, the and the image, the ghostly images she's seeing are not happy with her. So it's at first not clear whether she's being haunted or hallucinating, but uh, it really comes to a head when someone else sees one of those images. And well, it's her husband's shown back up just after he was declared dead. And he's not quite sure where he was, other than he was underneath. And he seems to be terrified that something might want him back. Meanwhile, through all this, Kelly has been, uh, just, as she goes on her daily jogs, has come across a strange tunnel, which seems more or less innocuous, but after meeting a strange homeless person in there who kind of spouted some nonsense about surprise that she could see him and seeming to want something and to trade, and when she... She promises to bring some food back, comes back later, he's gone, but she leaves it anyway, but then strange things start turning up, almost as if this, something was trying to trade with her. And whatever, and then <clears throat> and there seems to be a link between the missing husband and this strange tunnel and what might be dwelling within it. Now this neighborhood, there's been a lot of disappearances, pets, break-ins, people go missing around here fairly regularly. And what is going on? <clears throat> okay, so this movie works on a lot of levels for me. 
the low budget aspect actually kind of adds to this as it's done with a handheld camera for the most part. And it feels almost like you're right there in the action running along with them. It's not quite like a found footage style, but it's you feel more like you're just watching in on it. <clears throat> now the uh, way the one thing they keep doing is some like some like imaginary flashbacks, like when she's visioning what could have happened to her husband. A few images will flash by of what potential scenarios, or like uh, when th people go missing, she'll they'll imagine what alternate versions of what happened. Even though we saw what happened, it does make you wonder: is like do what we just see really happened, or was someone actually just because of drugs seeing things? Is it someone's hallucinations? <clears throat> What is really going on? So that works. Now they choose to keep the entity in question very well hidden and only seeing some silhouettes and outlines occasionally and some sounds which work very well because no matter what this thing looks like once you reveal it it's it will come up more disappointing but you get kind of a good feel for what it's supposed to look like. <clears throat> so that works. The budget doesn't hold it back in that area. Film's very well acted, too. You, there's some good tension between the sisters. The way they... Part of it seems like, because I don't recognize these actresses from anywhere else, but the way they occasionally are like almost talking over each other at the first does make it seem like it's more of a natural conversation rather than just stepping on each other's lines. It's just... They seem to... It feels like more of a natural conversation than just back-and-forth dialogue. And uh, the police detective who seems to have a thing for Trisha does. Then his reactors to a lot of things are seem very well put together. The movie's very well written, and uh, I really like. I said, in general, enjoy finding it in this work. So this one definitely is one of them. It's a smaller story. It's a slower burn, but it for me works very well. I don't know if I've got anything else to really go on. It's best to go in as blind as you can for this one, which is why I've kind of been vague on a lot of things. But, yeah, this... It's a weird little film, but I do highly recommend it. Alrighty. But, uh, yeah, don't, don't take a lot of stock of that image. Well, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Callie on the front there. Yeah, the thing with the hands grabbing her and pulling her into it, there, that's that does not happen. Nothing like that happens in the movie. Though you do kind of see a hint of something lurking in the tunnel there. That is more accurate, but what's going on here? Mm-mm. No. They're just trying to make the eye-catching cover. And when that, it actually does make it look more low, but uh, more direct to video, like I was saying earlier. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, MacGuffins, MacGuffins, MacGuffins. This one's the seventh MacGuffin movie for me. It's not Flanagan's best. He definitely became much more polished later on. I think Oculus, Hush are all much better movies, and I love Doctor Sleep, so a lot of those ones do pan out better, and his TV series is are really where he does shine. But this one, for a first horror effort, does well it really work. It's a creepy little mystery, and I do recommend it. See you soon, Lloyd.